I knew it was going to be hard, but I didn't think it was going to be like this extreme. If you have any vices, any weaknesses, uh, you really have to fight them and beat them in order to get through this school. Broad picture in a nutshell, they're in for the hardest six months of their life. My name is Bailey Kogan. My first impressions of uh, the school are, uh, it's pretty exciting. I'm having, I'm having a great time. You learn a lot in such a short period of time. It's only the second week, and I already have, feel like I've grown so much and learned so much in such a short period of time. Um, we're here today, I think we have about 16 head. Almost all of them are getting uh, full sets of shoes. So everyone's, you know, as you can see, trimming and doing, doing it all. A bunch of us are starting to shape our own shoes, which is uh, pretty exciting. Starting to, we still need a little help shaping, but everyone's you know nailing on, trimming, doing. Mo we're getting to do most of it. So we'll work on that in just a second. Let me nip this foot. You can go ahead and set this other one, start trimming your hands. Hello, I'm Cody Gregory. Today we're gonna to be talking about GE nippers and how to use them. Whenever I nip a foot, it's very much like walking in a balance beam. Back when I used to ride bulls, walking a balance beam was something I did for practice. And whenever I nip a foot, it's, I want to look out towards the end of the balance beam. You know, you know, if I looked at my feet, I'd fall off every time. But if I look at the end of that balance beam, by doing that, I can, I can have a lot more control and I can stay on it. Well, when I'm nipping, it's pretty easy to look right where you're at, zoom in on that spot, and before you know it, you're starting to follow the, follow the shape of the foot and you're not gonna have a flat nip. Whenever I'm trimming feet, I like to rasp minimally. So I'll take a nip, I'll look at that foot, rasp only my high spots, and there's occasions where I don't rasp the foot at all because I got it flat enough with my nip. And that's something that I can only do with superior quality nippers. This foot's kind of high outside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to imagine that that's where I want to come out with my nippers and that's where I want to come out with my nippers. So every time that I nip, I've got a laser plane on this foot and I'm aiming that face of that nipper to where I want it to come out. I nip, I'm going to turn my inside rein, drag it along into that inside corner, nip, twist, drag, twist. And I'm just aiming every time. I'm looking at the end of that balance beam. Looking at the end of that balance beam. Looking at the end of that balance beam right through the end. Boom. Now I'll start back at that toe. If I'd started at the heel there, I wouldn't have been able to see my nippers working forward. So you can see I'm using that inside rein. My outside hand doesn't really move that much. I'm almost just holding that rein. Boom. Boom. Boom, boom. And you can see that I don't live out in New Mexico because I'm able to nip that with one hand and I'm not grunting as I nip that foot. I got a little bit of length in that toe. So I'm gonna take one more nip through my toe. And with the precision tool, not only can you do flat nips, but you can do small nips if you need. If any of you guys have used this, I'm, I'm not telling you anything you don't know.
Deer coming along excellent. And we're gonna have our burritos and we gotta do a little bit of forage cooking. Because the liner is in such bad shape, that is a nice hot spot. You learn how to cook on your particular model of forge. <laughs> Hey, you guys are starting to come together. Yesterday was a little rough for some of you, but today was pretty nice, huh? So this is how it happens. We just keep pushing you, we keep pushing you, we keep we keep forging you, basically. And there's and there, and as you guys know that there is a lot of pressure around here. And what's also amazing is um, there's some really talented guys in this class and girls. And so they are, they're setting the standard and making the rest of you guys try to get to it. So um, I'm, I'm really liking what I'm seeing. I think it's gonna be a banner year. I'm, uh, I'm really happy with what I got. I know not all of you owe uh, push-ups from yesterday, uh, but you're sure welcome to join us. Uh, I'm gonna take the truck and want you guys to drive the van. There's a corner, there's like a triangular corner off of the uh, highway. We're gonna do it first. Then we'll go back up and start, and then just come past the school. Um, I got trash bags. Did everybody get trash bags? And I got a bin that I'll throw in the back of the truck if we have dead animals. There's like a dead deer with pretty, with just bone, we'll leave it alone, but there's a whole bunch of dead uh, uh, geese, geese, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, uh, so we need to throw them. We'll, we'll throw them in the bin. Um, but if you guys have burnable trash, we'll come back here and light the bonfire and we'll just burn all that up tonight, okay? Up trash because we got over a thousand push-ups on our anatomy test that we got wrong. So instead of doing push-ups, we were out here picking up garbage on the interstate. What makes being a farrier different from being a craftsman is, as a craftsman, you're pretty much solely relying on your eye to tell you, okay, this is beautiful to my eye. Whereas the horse is a constant test. Like the foot is the shape of the foot. I can adjust it a little, I can make it more the shape that I want, but ultimately, if I don't fit the foot, then I haven't completed my task, I haven't succeeded. And as an artist, I might be able to say, oh, this looks horseshoe enough, but for the foot, like the foot will tell me, the horse will tell me if I did a good job or not in six weeks. So like ultimately that's really what, uh, that, that, that keeps you honest. I don't believe that a machine can analyze a horse's conformation, gait, behavior, the way a person can. Moreover, horses are living creatures. So I don't believe that a machine would settle an animal like a horse, react to a horse's breathing, a horse's movement, a horse's feeling the way that a person can. Um, it really is something that I think will continue to be timeless. There's no, you know, there's no reason for a machine when you can build a shoe to a foot in two heats. There's, there's no reason for it. It's just not efficient money-wise to come up with the machine that does that. So as long as people stay passionate and continue to be able to reach that level, there will be a need for ferrets, absolutely.